Hello everybody. So the Lord gave me a word and um, gave this to me March 4th, 2024 at 11.22 p.m. And we're starting in Ecclesiastics um, 3, 1, a time for everything. And here it is. There is an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven. And then it led me to Isaiah 10, 12. And this reads, so it will be that when the Lord has completed all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, and then he said his children, he will say, I will perish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the pomp of his haughtiness." Then 13, for he said, and the Lord said, the devil, so Satan, for he said, for he has said, by the power of my hand and and by my wisdom, I did this, for I have understanding and I removed the boundary of the people and plundered their treasures. And like a mighty man, I brought down their inhabitants and God said church. And so where it says by the power of my hand and by my wisdom I did this for I have understanding and I remove the boundaries of the people the people of God so Satan has got in through our eye gate and our ear gate is what the Lord is saying well not ours but some whoever these people are that the Lord is speaking to which are the children who have not returned and so Satan is saying that he has removed the boundaries of the people, meaning <sighs> intoxicated them with so much of the world that they don't even have sensitivity to the Lord. They can't tell the difference between God and they can't tell the difference between Satan. They can't tell the difference. They think the things of the enemy are the things of God and the things of God are from <laughs> Satan, right? It's just, man... It's so mixed up, you guys. Like, even just, like, there's so many people blaming God for the things that Satan's doing that are blessings, that are really counterfeits, are really things that the enemy is sending in right before God is getting ready to send you what God has for you to lure you into believing that God isn't a promise keeper. Because when the enemy gives it to you because you think, that it is that it is of God, but it's clickbait to get you to grab onto something that is not of God at all. And then as time goes by, you end up finding out that that thing you received is actually destruction. It actually had come to steal the promise of God, to kill the dreams and desires God gave you, and to destroy you and your vision and your hope and your belief in God and your trust in him. And so the enemy has got you guys to conform the enemy got you guys to think like you know oh god wouldn't be mad if i just did this because he loves me but just because somebody loves you doesn't mean they approve of what you do you know and you can take that for your family members for your friends for your lovers or ex-lovers like you can say that you've loved somebody but you didn't approve of what they were doing, the way that they move, the things they indulge in, their perspective, like, and not even on the things of, you know, God. It's just really that they're mixing things and they're tainted, like they're calling evil good and they're calling good evil. It's like they don't even have discernment to know that wrong is wrong and right is right. They don't have spiritual discernment or uh, discerning of spirits to understand what spirit is operating in the people that are presenting them these things. And so Satan has got in through your eye gates and your ear gates, through covetousness and through just envying of sinners and just indulging in the things of the world that the lord told you not to indulge in and so the enemy has got you to lower your standards lower your um your worth and and lower what you stand for your integrity and your morals and your values he's got in through the things you listen to the people you listen to the music you listen to the words you listen to the motivational 
words that you listen to, sermons by corrupted preachers and pastors and such, and also just through secular music, secular um, influencers, you know, and just the things you watch, movies that have all these encryptions and all these like subliminal messages that are going into your minds and man whether you're on guard or not but they are planting these seeds and they are being watered by you continually continuing to dwell in the world and with people who are sinning with no remorse at all and so satan has got you guys to the point of where you're no longer sensitive to the holy spirit nor the spirit of god you can't tell black from white and then when you get gray you're fine with being lukewarm and you don't understand that you have to pick a side and not picking a side means you are picking satan's side side unknowingly and so back to what i was saying it is that God was saying that Satan it says I removed the boundaries of the people and plundered their treasures the things that God has given you he's stolen the gifts and the talents and the things that God has given you for his kingdom and it says and like a mighty man I brought down their inhabitants meaning their church God's churches 14 says and my hand reach to the riches reach to the riches of the peoples like a nest and as one gathers abandoned eggs abandoned egg i gathered all the earth and there was not one that flapped and then lord and the lord said to me the spiritually blinded no discernment so God was talking about them being spiritually blinded and having no discernment, okay? And that is even, I believe, in um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, where it says Satan has blinded the eyes of the, the non-believers, which is why you guys don't believe because Satan has blinded your eyes. And so the uh, no discernment, that's what God says. And so... Satan then says, its wings, or, um, okay, so flapped their wings, and there was not one that flapped its wing, or opened its beak, or chirped. And then God says, in 21, a remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, right, will return. So, a remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob jacob to the mighty god so god is snatching and grabbing his children out of the traps and the snares of the enemy so 22 for though your people O israel may be like sand of the sea only a remnant within them will return and all this goes together from all the words god has been giving me um and i put them in a play playlist i think it's called the judgment begins or something like that and all these flow together so <laughs> if you just want to watch them like they all flow together like all of god's words make sense time after time after time this all goes together and so 22 i'm gonna read it again for though your people O israel may be like sand of the sea only a remnant within them will return a destruction is determined overflowing with righteousness for a complete destruction one that will one that is decreed the lord god of hosts will execute in the midst of the whole land therefore thus says the lord god of hosts O my people who are who dwell in Zion, do not fear the Assyrians who strike you. Okay, with the rod and lift up his staff against you the way Egypt did. So he's talking about the enemy. Okay, so he said, Therefore, thus says the Lord, God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not fear the Assyrians who strikes you with the rod and lifted up his staff against you the way Egypt did, mm, the ways your enemies did in your past. 
do not fear them. For in a very little while, my indignation, and then he had me look it up, it says anger or annoyance, provoked by what is um, perceived as unfair treatment. And then I'm going to pick up from my Bible. So where am I? I am um, 25. So where, okay. For in a little while, my indignation against you will be spent and my anger will be directed to their destruction. So God is coming. God is coming again just to do a sweep up to get his people. And then it says 26, the Lord of hosts will arose a scourge against him like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his staff will be over the sea and he will lift up the way he did in egypt so this is god so the lord of hosts okay and then i'm gonna go back down it says and his staff so we're talking about god will be over the sea and he will lift up the way he did in egypt so he will deliver you again the way he did before okay so he will come he's coming for you again and he's going to deliver you so then 27 which is the remnant within the remnant, the remnant of Jacob, okay? So 27, the remnant of Jacob. I did a, um, a breakdown in a study that the Lord gave me, and it's called the Jacob series. That's what he's talking about. Hmm. The mischiefs one, the one who's been rejected. You guys should watch that, because this is going together. The remnant of Jacob. This is what he's saying. Because he's going to use you guys. Oh, Jesus. Okay, okay. You guys should watch that. Because these this goes together. Okay, there's revelation in that. So, 27. So, it will be in that day that his burden will be removed. So, we're talking about the ones he's calling. So, it will be in that day that his burden will be removed from your shoulder he's talking about satan okay <laughs> the burden satan has placed on you will be removed from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be broken because of fatness and the yoke will be broken because of fatness hallelujah 33 behold the lord the god of hosts will loft off the um what is this 27 will loft off mm, what is this is this 27 no this is 33 behold the lord okay behold the lord the god of hosts will loft off the bots uh with a terrible crash okay with a terrible crash those also who are tall and statured will be cut off will be cut down those also who are tall and statured will be cut down and then the lord said the saws the ones who won't listen to god so he's talking about the ones who turn their back they will not listen and those who are lofty will be abased and then he had me look up lofty it says of imposing height so again, the arrogant one, the one full of pride, like when Satan was just sitting here, like excited, like he's sitting over here saying, by the power of my hand, whew, and by my wisdom, I did this for I have understanding and I removed the board, the boundaries of the people and plundered their treasures. And like a mighty man, I brought, I brought down their inhabitants. And my hand uh, reached to their riches of the people like a nest. And as, and as one gathers abandoned egg, I gathered all the earth. And there was not one that flapped its wings or opened its beak or chirped. Okay, the ones who did, did the destruction and the destroying, the one who are bo boasting and hosty, like the ones who are just full of pride. Mm, Lord. 
34. He will cut down the thicket of the forest with an iron axe and Lebanon will fall by the mighty one. Who Jesus. Mm, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh God, oh God, let your will be done, oh Lord. Then 24, one through six, I'm gonna read. Behold, the Lord lays the earth waste, devastates it, distorts it, surface and scatters its inhabitants and the people will be like the priest the servant like his master and then he said wealth transfer from the wicked um proverbs 13 21 through 22 this is what's happening the buyer like the seller the lender like the borrower the creditor like the debtor the earth will be completely laid waste and completely despoiled, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers, the world fades and withers, the uh, exalted of the people of the earth fades away. Because only God is to be high and lifted, only God is to get his glory. We the people don't get to steal God's glory that's not what we get to do so he's gone <clears throat> hmm. exalt those who he can trust exalt those he can trust and who are humbled before him and he is going to dethrone those who are proud and lifted up by their own hands in their own doing but really it's not even theirs it's satan's doing and even satan ain't gonna let you take what belongs to him because huh? there's a trap in it all Whew. the earth is also polluted by its inhabitants for they transgressed laws violated statutes statutes broke the everlasting covenant so this is what God is saying. The earth is also polluted by its inhabitants. So the earth literally is also polluted by the people who are living in it. For they transgressed laws. You went against the laws of God and the spiritual laws and the laws and the commandments that he's put in place for us to obey. Violated statutes. Then it says, broke the everlasting covenant meaning the covenants god has made with us we broke it <sighs> well not on all of us but the ones he's talking to therefore a curse devours the earth and those who live in it and are held guilty therefore a curse devours the earth and those hmm, who live in it are held guilty and those who live in it are held guilty therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men are left because it's full of wickedness now isaiah 10 and 20 took me to now in that day the remnant of israel and those of Jacob who have escaped, those of Israel and those of Jacob, mm. who have escaped will never again rely on the one who struck them, but will truly rely on the Lord. Now in that day, the remnant of Israel, meaning the ones who came to God, gave their lives to God, submitted, right? Because as you watch the Jacob series, you're gonna find out, it's like two videos, but you're gonna find out very quickly that the remnant, that not the remnant, but that Israel are the children of God. Israel are the children of God. That is spiritual. It's not literally Israel over. No, it's spiritual because it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
right? It starts with Abraham bringing back the lineage and his bloodline to God. Abraham is the curse breaker. And then from him, it goes to Isaac. Then from Isaac, he has Jacob and Esau, but Jacob is the one who God used. So then from there, there's in scripture how Jacob is wrestling with God, right? And then in that moment, while he's wrestling, God goes ahead and changes his name from Jacob, so the curse, to Israel, that is the renewed one, which is the blessing bloodline, okay? So watch that for deeper revelation. But, so God is saying, the ones who return, so now in that day, the remnant of Israel, so the ones he already snatched up, his children, right? And those of Jacob, so the ones who are still out there, who are still straggling, you know, and struggling and being oppressed by Satan, which is why I'm saying you need to watch the Jacob series because then it's going to all click. Oh, God is good. Oh, my gosh. He just be flowing. Like, he's just like, I've... You guys, know, like, God really knows all things. Like, man, what is it? Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Like, I'm going to read that in a, right after I finish this. Because God is just, man, genius. Genius. Like, the epitome. Like, humans are not genius. Like, God is like, I can't even describe him. Man, his wisdom is just infinite. Like, man, and just going through every word like that he gave me like how they all flow till this day and it's not often he gives me them at different times different days different years like and it all still continues like glory be to god hallelujah god glory be to you i bless your name you are excellent in all your ways and all of them god bless you i exalt you give you all the honor the praise and the glory you are so perfect okay and then he took me back to ecclesiastics 3 1 it says there is an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven 16 furthermore i have seen this is god for furthermore i have seen everything under the sun that is placed of judgment there is wickedness and i highlighted justice there is wickedness even i have seen everything under the sun justice there is wickedness so he had me highlight those and then he said his judgment then it says and in the place of righteousness there is wickedness so People are saying they're righteous, but truly they are wicked is what he's saying. He says, I've seen everything under the sun <sighs> and judgment, you guys, is just here. And so then he says, and in the place of righteousness, there is a wickedness. <sighs> Pastors, prophets, apostles, evangelists, what else, God? Prophets, preachers, teachers, right? They are claiming they're righteous, but he says he's seen everything under the sun. And he said, and in the place of righteousness, there is wickedness. 17. God will judge both the righteous man and the wicked man. Then he took me to 8 and 8, and he gave me this March 6, 2024, at 1.29 a.m. and said... And evil will not deliver those who practice it. So let's bring that back. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every event under the sun, under heaven. There is a time for every event under heaven. Furthermore, I have seen everything under the sun that is place of judgment there is wickedness and in the place of righteousness there is wickedness god will judge both the righteous man and the wicked man and evil will not deliver those who practice it
So those who practice evil, there's no way out. Satan ain't going to get you out. He can't spare you. He can't save you. Only repenting, only turning away from wickedness will save you. And again, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 7.14. And those who are called by my name. If you humble yourselves, if you seek my faith, if you pray, if you turn from your wicked ways, then I will hear from my Father. And I will forgive you. I think it's actually, I will forgive you. I will hear from my Father and I will heal your land. Those are the orders. But you must humble yourself, turn from your wicked ways. You must humble yourself. You have to turn from your wicked ways. Because to turn from your wicked ways is humility is to say I was wrong. This whole time I was wrong. And you have to seek God and you have to pray. Because <sighs> only he can save you. And like I told you, I'm going to read Isaiah 55. 8 and 9. Hmm. And this is what the Lord says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm going to continue. And read 10. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seeds to the sower and bread to the eater, so will my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. For you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into, shout, into shouts of joy before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And then skip a little. It says, and it will be a memorial to the Lord for an everlasting sign, which will not be cut off. And you guys, we know that's the promise of the Lord for those who return. But all in all, though, and, and I'm just speaking like the promise of those who return 12. Okay. <laughs> but all in all. Glory be to God. This is a great word because the Lord is calling people back and and he still has a plan to get the Jacobs, you know, and to get the called ones. Like he's not one to give up on his own, mm, but he is one of judgment and righteous judgment. And for that, we give God all the glory, all the honor and the praise. Father God, we come into agreement. Father God, at least I do. I come into agreement with every word you've spoken today, Father God. And I come into agreement with it. I come into agreement with it. I come into agreement with it. And I stand with you. Whatever your will is. Whatever your desire is, God. Father God, I pray that you would do a work in those you've called to see this video. And those who you are talking to. I pray that you turn their heart of stone into a heart of flesh, oh God. I pray that you would get the glory out of their story. That you would get the final say in their lives. That curses would break off, Father God. That witchcraft would break off of them, Father God. That the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and wickedness in high places. That they would be loosened off of them, Father God. That you would loose them off of them and in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you would loose them, Father God, and that you would be rid them, Father God, and that you would get their the, the grip that they have on your people, Father God, 
off of your people and sever the ties, O oh God, uprooting every evil seed that was planted, every diabolical plan for their lives, Father God, every Thing that was inserted into their bodies from food from drinks father from supplements father from words father from things spoken over their lives oh god pray that you would uproot those things and i pray that you would fill them with your love with your kindness with your truth with the revelation of your word oh god i pray that the holy spirit would do a search in their hearts and their minds and their bodies and their souls and separate father god every attachment from the world every attachment from the enemy i pray father god because you said your word is sharper than a two-edged sword cutting in between joints and marrow cutting in between the spirit and the soul i pray that you would separate them from the world i pray that you would loose them father god from every stronghold every bondage every chain oh god and i pray that you would loose them from the territory of satan 